Hello and welcome to another video of the series server side swift using vapor. So in the last video I showed you how easy it is to run basic crud methods in vapor using fluent. So in this video I'll show you how it can perform more powerful queries just as easily. So starting off with our first method, we'll be implementing a search filter to search for our elements in the periodic table in the database. So a search functionality is a very common feature in uh, applications. And uh, if you want to search an element of the periodic table in the database, Fluent makes it very easy. So let me show you how we can implement this in our periodic table application. I'll link the startup project file in the description of this video. So you guys can follow ahead with me. So to start off, we'll go to our root.swift file. And here we can import the Fluent model. Now we can create a route at the end of the file, which will handle the search functionality. So what this method does is, it creates a GET request with the endpoints API, element and search and it returns an array of periodic table elements. Now inside this function, this line would search for the URL query string and if it fails, it will throw a 400 bad request error. And after that, we're using the filter method to find all the elements whose simple property matches with the search term, as you can see here. Now, because this uses key paths, the compiler can enforce type safety on the properties and the filter terms. This will prevent any runtime issues that can be caused by specifying the invalid column name or invalid type on the filter. So you guys don't need to worry about anything else after implementing this function. So we can go ahead and run our application. So now we can test this out in Postman app. Let's first create some elements. So we can use the post API that we created in the last video to add some elements to our database. Great, now that we have some elements in our database, we can try out our search method. So this was API slash element slash search. And uh, this was a get request. And here we can just add the term. Let's search for O. So this returns the element with the symbol O. Similarly, if we search for C here, this will return carbon. Great. But currently our app is only searching for the chemical symbol of the element. What if we wanted to search for the name as well as the chemical symbol of the element? So for that, we can make a few changes in the same function. So we can use a filter group in this case, which will use the OR relation to search for both the symbol and the chemical name of the element. So we can change this line to So here we have created a group of queries in which we are using the OR relation and uh, this line will create a filter to search for the chemical symbol of the element. And uh, this line would create a filter to search for the chemical name of the element. And both of these will be grouped together. And at the end, we'll return all of those search results. So we can run our application now. And 
and test this out again in Postman. So when we search for C, we're getting the carbon element and we can also search for carbon. Great, this is working. You can also try out oxygen here. Great. So this is how filter method works using Fluent and uh, we didn't have to write a single SQL query. So Fluent just took care of all the complicated SQL queries for us. So the next function that we're going to look at is first result. Now sometimes an application needs only the first result of the query. So creating a specific handler for this ensures that the database only returns one result rather than lo loading all the results into the memory. Now let's see how we can implement this in our periodic table app. So again, in our roots.swift file, we can create a new handler. So what this function does is create a new get request with the endpoints API element. And first, that returns a future periodic table. So here we'll create a query to get the first element of the periodic table. The first function, this will return an optional value since there may be no element in the database and we are using the unwrap function to make sure that an element exists or else it will throw the not found error. Let's run our application and test this out. And we can test this out in Postman. So yeah, let's test this out in the Postman app. Here we can add the endpoints, which is first. And we can just send the request. So here it will return the first element with the ID one in our database. Next function, which is sorting results. So many apps commonly need to sort the results of queries before returning them. So for this reason, Fluent provides a sort function. Now let's see how we can implement the sort function in our periodic table application. So at the end of the roots file, we can create a new root So what this function does is create a new route at API element sorted endpoints, which is a get request and it returns an array of periodic table objects. Here we are using the sort function, which will sort our results according to the alphabetic ascending order of our chemical symbols and it will return all of those search results. So let's go ahead and run this. And we can test this out in the Postman app. Let's enter the URL which was sorted, set it as a get request and we can just send the request. So as you can see this will return our objects sorted according to the alphabetic ascending order of our chemical symbols. So we can stop this over here. So that's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. And uh, now we have seen how we can implement different CRUD operation and some of these advanced queries that Fluent provides us. So as you can see, our roots.swift file is currently very, very cluttered. So in the next video, I'll introduce the concept of controllers so that we can better organize our application. Thank you guys for watching.